Hi, my name is Courtney Smith, I'm a landscape painter and you're about to see this video, uh, Blustery Sky. First part, acrylic, and then the second part, oil painting demo. Uh, the first part is in normal time, as the acrylic underpainting gets put on, and then the second part is a time lapse of the oil painting with a bit of commentary. At the end of the video, I'm going to do the draw for the Twitter follower who has won this painting here. Tune in for that. Until then, enjoy the video and I'll see you for the draw. Hi, this is Scott Naismith and welcome to the commentary of this video. You would have just seen me do the acrylic underpainting. Um, so I'm now doing the oil on top. And uh, the subject of my commentary today is going to be a little bit about commercialism uh, versus an honesty. Now the difficulty with my work is that the subject matter could be considered very commercial. They are seascapes and landscapes and, and although they are deemed to be fairly kind of unfashionable in the art world, they are still a commercial kind of uh, prospect. So uh, the difficulty for an artist like me is to not be seen as someone who is necessarily painting to a market. And that brings me to a, a comment someone once said about my work. What they said about me was that I painted to a market. And I took terrible offence at this, because um, if you're honest about what you're painting and you're putting passion into what you paint, 
um, you will be painting what you want to paint. Ask yourself, if I never sold a painting ever again in my life, would I be painting what I'm painting? And if the answer is yes, you're on the uh, you're on the right lines. Um, and painting to a market is very um, uh, is very obvious at times, um, but it's not so obvious at other times. You've got to know something about that artist. You've got to know something about what they do and what makes them paint sometimes. Um, but it, it it's very important for in terms of a career uh, that you're you're not doing this. Uh, an art school education. Um, takes four years. It takes five years if you do a portfolio course and then you go on to art school and do four years. There's a lot of self-taught artists out there who are very good. Uh, they are very competent. But the problem with being a self-taught artist is that you've got to remember that people that had a formal education spent four or five years developing painting as a craft, as an art, before they began to sell their work. Now that means that they were allowed to develop ideas before selling and sales were even a consideration to what they were producing. And that's just as important to the formal training of the physical development of artwork. I guess what I'm saying is that there needs to be a, a point of, of consideration about what you're painting before you actually try to sell anything. My other video out there, uh, Three Sisters of Glencoe, I, the commentary in that video talks about the uh, development of an artist's style and uh, I suppose this links in a fair amount to that because um, the most important thing to remember uh, when finding yourself, finding your own style is uh, not to get caught up in the, the sales of it and uh, and to develop, most importantly, the concepts of what you're doing. Always think about the concept of the painting. What's the concept? What you're trying to achieve with colour, with uh, uh, with meaning. Uh, what are you trying to get across? And it needs to be something that you get across that you are passionate about. What is the purpose? How are you going to make the world see something differently? And if you can do that within a concept of the painting, you have achieved something truly your own uh, that people will buy into um, because they believe in what you're saying as an artist. Incidentally, the concepts of, of what you see in front of you is the, um, the behaviour of, of the two different types of paint. Uh, I like to be very honest with the medium that I'm using, the activity of oil paint and the activity of um, acrylic paint and what happens. Uh, the acrylic paint is laid on uh, horizontal and it, it set, I let to let it sort of drift around and settle, uh, whereas the oil paint is a little bit more controlled and laid down in glazes and, and specific marks are made there's a prominent splash involved with the acrylic paint uh, which really is representing a movement and the physicality of paint hitting the canvas still being apparent by the end of the painting despite that it was put on at the start of the painting. Um, I like that uh, idea that some layers, some earlier layers would be prominent at the, at the end. A lot of the concepts within my work are about visual perception and the fact that our eyes tend to play tricks on us. Uh, my previous video about magenta is about colours playing tricks on us and our heads uh, really recording what is there is only half the story. Um, we can be very led by photography uh, and stills and in our heads be very drawn to um, representing what happens when a photograph takes a still of a place and yet our perception of a place is very different from that and trying to get that across this passage of time, this movement um, is very important in my work. Okay, next up is the uh, Twitter draw. Thanks for listening to the commentary. Mm -hmm.
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is the Twitter draw, so without further ado, I'm going to select the winner from uh, 80, 82, I think, followers who have retweeted uh, this tweet here. So let's get going. Okay, so that looks like uh, Rosamundo, or Rosamundo, uh, I'm going to send that painting to you, I'll get in touch with a, a direct Twitter message, so uh, congratulations to Rosamundo, at Rosamundo, you can follow me at, at Scott Naismith, or you can follow me on Facebook, uh, or indeed subscribe to this channel, thanks a lot for watching.